Oh, you are teaching there? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay. And do you studied in which college? You studied? Sorry? You studied in which college? I have studied in Germany for okay. my master's and then I completed my PhD from Pune University. Okay, okay. Good. And? Radhe Radhe, this is Anishri, a member of the student marketing and I am a student. Okay. Thank you. 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 I am Samruti Babu from. Uh, oh, you are the one who wrote to me. Yeah, yes, Samruti. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we can ask the questions. Sir. Sure. Yeah. So the very first question. We are talking about youthfulness. Yeah. So of course you do have youthful energy now, but when your soul was in youthful body <laughs> back then. So tell us something about your childhood and uh, you know your IIT Bombay days and what made you choose this youthful spiritual path. I I am I come from a Shastri family in uh, Tamil Nadu, South India, Madurai. There is a place called Madurai. So my grandfather was a shastri who used to study the scriptures and do puja and teach people Ramayana, Mahabharata, and all. But later on, my father got into college studies and he did. He got a dozen degrees actually, like triple MA in English and triple MS in mathematics and law and many things he did. Very highly educated man. So then he also sent me for engineering. He told me to go. But in my school days, once in my uh, when I was in my third uh, standard, I saw a gurukula. Where the Sahana Pavutu, they were chanting that uh, recitation. So uh, that was the first time my attraction for the Vedas uh, dawned in my heart when I heard the Vedic chant Sahana Pavutu, Sahana Punaktu, Sahaviryam Karabavahai, Tejas Vinabadhi Tamas Tuma Ved Vishavahai. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. This is the first. An incantation from Vedas I heard while passing, so I became attracted to the school. So I asked my father to admit me in the Gurukula, but he he said the many poor Brahman children study there. You come from a you know millionaire family. Why do you want to go there? So he said I will arrange a Brahmana to come and teach at home. So he arranged for some Brahmans to come and teach me Vedic chant and all. I was learning. So that was the first encounter I had with the Vedic knowledge. Then later on in my Fifth standard, when I saw monks, I also felt that there are engineers, there are doctors, there are chartered accountants. But what about monks who are studying the scriptures and living it, and also speaking it, and benefiting the world? You know, so I also wanted to do something like that selflessly. So I told my teacher also, I like the life of a monk. They are carefree and they are cheerful. They are always with God, and they always wish well for everybody. They have no enemies in this world. Like that, so, and I grew up, and between my fifth and tenth standard, I must have studied like uh, uh, more than forty Bible courses, correspondence courses, because uh, there are many Bible schools in uh, India which are offering uh, correspondence courses. So I was studying. So my father said, uh, "It's good that you are studying Bible, but you should read Bhagavad Gita also." <laughs> then my tenth standard, he gave me a copy of Bhagavad Gita, and that was a turning point in my life when I read that. And uh, I was very, very charmed by that, and I wanted to dedicate my life at that time. <clears throat> But father would tell me that you you should have a degree, otherwise nobody will listen to you. If you earn a degree, then educated people will be eager to learn from you. So he told me that my condition is only one thing: you become an engineer or a doctor or a chartered accountant, some prestigious profession you should get, and then after that you, st if you still have leaning, you can join. He said. So uh, for his satisfaction, I did my. Um, engineering and I finished and I worked in Thermax also in Pune. I worked for over three four years. I worked way back in uh, 1994. I uh, joined as a celibate monk for uh, distributing Krishna consciousness. At that time, my age was 25. At that time, so so uh, from that time on and up to now, close to 30 years, this has been my service. Basically, dharma prachar. You know, yeah, we go. to schools we go to colleges we go to corporate uh, uh, seminar in companies we go to homes also 
And in our community, there are like 6,000 people here in our community, all bhaktas. But 95, 90, I can even say 98% of them are married people. They are all living around the temple. And my, like myself, we are about 150 of us in our uh, temple. So you can compare 150 versus 6,000. Uh, they are a very big, large uh, proportion. They also come and do seva. They, uh, often they come on the weekends, they come and do seva here in the temple. And we are around the clock. This is our home also for us, for monks. So we stay here morning. We have a very nice program, 4.30 to 9.30. And then daytime, we prepare PowerPoints and uh, materials for courses like this. We prepare in the daytime. And the afternoon, evening, we go out to many schools, colleges, companies. And uh, earlier I was doing in Pune, then uh, we started going to all IITs and NITs in India. Then uh, in Pune also we have been going to a dozen uh, colleges. We do one program in the college, and those are more interested than one, one of the students' room, we do a program after that. And, uh, and they also, when they catch this knowledge, when they go all over the world, they distribute good vibration wherever they are going. Like you went to Germany, right? Yes. Yeah. So imagine you uh, take this knowledge and go to Germany, you can give, in uh, German you can teach them, huh? isn't it? You, because many of them are also looking for Vedic knowledge, yeah. yeah. You are in Munich, which place you are in? No, I was in Dortmund. Okay. Western, uh, Western side of Germany, yeah. Right. Nearby to Dusseldorf. Okay. If you tell them you are from India, immediately they will ask you, can you tell us about Bhagavad Gita? <laughs> that there are many people looking for spirituality. In Germany also, Europe, all over Europe and America also. Now I'm going to US uh, three months in a year as a global duty officer appointed from ISKCON. And I go, I go from the entire East Coast to the West Coast I cover. I go, I go to a dozen places I go. So when I go to universities, I see that uh, there's a very great uh, welcome for this knowledge. Everywhere the students are desperate. And actually students are burning in anxieties with many, these kind of problems. I made this brochure only after consulting my student and seeing that, seeing their life. When I travel across, I see that. Our philosophy actually is a very, very beautiful philosophy that we practice. It is not a philosophy of negating the negative. Actually, many organizations, I don't want to name anybody, but you see generally what they say, you sit silently and withdraw your senses and become calm, cool, collected, you know, take a long breath. And then the goal of life, they say, is silence and calmness. But what uh, in Gita Lord Krishna says, it is not just negating the negative, it is engaging in the positive. Mm -hmm. Not only when you sit silently, you can calm your mind. Even when you are active also, you need to only know that you should be rightly active and not wrongly active. Mm -hmm. For example, with my hand, I can take a healthy food and put in the mouth. Instead of taking a liquor bottle and, uh, bottle and putting in the mouth. Or putting a cigarette in the mouth. Correct, no? Uh, similarly, our intake has to be making our body, mind and soul healthy. For example, if I hear music, say, uh, uh, there is a soothing music. I have a video with me which shows, when you, I can just show you, if you two minutes, if you, one minute if you see, you will immediately understand what I am saying. Because one short clip can convey so much. You can say that. And see this one. The film you are about to see has no characters. If you spare a little of your imagination, it is a film to describe to you the effect of cymatic frequencies of matter. So he's showing melodious music produces beautiful patterns and uh, heavy rock produces disturbance that he's going to show you. You see patterns are forming. Now when he plays the bass guitar, now he will buy a See now how water is getting disturbed. Then you will show the water jet, how... By beating of the drums, how the water jet gets affected. 
Ah, it burns completely because most of our body is made up of water. If you hear the rock music, this is how they get. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yeah. You understand? Huh? So, 120 decibels. Doctors say it disturbs your biological rhythm. Huh? And why? So that is the reason why many students who hear the rock music, two things it does. One is it arouses your passion, and also it uh, it doesn't calm the mind; it agitates the mind. And uh, on the other hand, you saw when you play beautiful notes, nice patterns are formed. Similarly, your brain also forms patterns when it uh, hears the sounds. So we sing uh, very nice, soothing music. Like Hare Krishna, you must have seen. In our all over America, when I go, they hear like half an hour, one hour. Uh, they participate in the kirtans. Many college students come, like 100 uh, university students there. So, this is a positive engagement which calms the mind, truly calms the mind. So, we encourage positive engagement rather than just negating the negative. Like, you know, the three monkeys, don't see bad, don't hear bad, don't speak bad. You have seen that? Yeah. So, instead of that, we say that instead of speaking bad, speak proper. You know, speak something useful to others. Speak sweetly. Don't speak in hurting ways. Huh? Similarly, uh, uh, speak uh, something based on the wisdom which will benefit others rather than speaking rubbish, correct, no? Similarly, with the ears also, instead of plugging the ears, we can make a plan to hear something that will uplift us. Some uplifting information we can hear, uplifting music we can hear. Uh, similarly, with the eyes also, when you come to temple and take darshan, you all took darshan, now? Yeah. Yes. Beautiful darshan, yes, sir, Radha Vandana Chandra. Same Lord is there, correct, no? <laughs> So, that is uh, uh, purifying and uplifting darshan, isn't it? Uh -huh. So, in this way, when you go around, you, you can see like we have uh, Govindas, we call it. Put prasad. Uh -huh. When you are taking prasad, when you are eating, that is a positive thing. Instead of uh, putting items which will, uh, like for example, the meat, for example. Uh -huh. Meat actually is not only a cruelty to the poor creature, but also when you eat that, like our uh, intestines, you know, our intestines are 30 feet long and the concentration of uh, gastric juice is one-tenth of the tiger's gastric juice. So, the tiger's gastric uh, juice is uh, ten times more concentrated than ours and uh, length is only this much, intestine. Huh? So, when you put, when tiger eats the flesh, then it just, uh, like that, it just crushes it and throws it out. Whereas, in our thing, it goes through a long course Plus, the, the juice is also less concentrated. So, people find difficulty in digesting meat foods. And then it, it, it causes some kind of uh, cancerous element over a period of time. People don't know actually. Huh? As uh, your digestion is uh, poor, you know, some unwanted products of the meat remain in the body. And over a period of time, they accumulate in uh, quantity. And then they cause various diseases like that. So, leave alone religion, God and other things, even from a health point of view. You know, so we can see what to take in and what not to take. So our main training is about adopt habits which are mind uplifting. And also they are progressive in nature and don't uh, give inputs which are degrading and harmful. Recreation is good, but no harmful recreation. So therefore, uh, this is one prime teaching uh, in our colleges when we go. We teach uh, Japa meditation. No, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Regarding that also, there is a very nice short video I'll show you, which was taken in Florida University. They did this research. I'll just show you. Uh, edit properly. Indeed, sound vibrations are and carry a profound message. Spiritual disciplines recommend meditational practices such as silent meditation, silent recitation of mantras, and also the verbal repetition of specific mantras out loud. A clinical test of the benefits of mantra chanting was performed on three groups of 62 subjects, males and females of average age 25. They chanted the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 25 minutes each day under strict clinical supervision. Results showed that regular chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra reduces stress and depression and helps reduce bad habits and addictions. These results 
formed a PhD thesis at Florida State University. You saw now, isn't it? So it's a, nowadays researches are being done like this on students. And that is the reason probably I think in America there is a great reception for this. When we go, when students, uh, if you present something scientifically, they happily accept. After that, you will see that. So, in this way, our formula is very simple. We say A, B, C. Huh? A for association, which means weekly once you keep some inputs. You know, you take one class, ask questions, we invite the students. And B for Bhagavad Gita, one page a day, you know, of Bhagavad Gita. And C for this chanting, Nam Jab. Any student who does this, they can easily conquer all bad habits. And you will see that. People who have been into various, uh, into drinking, smoking, drugs, and some are simply addictive to Netflix. Mm -hmm. They can't give up. Yeah, but when they chant over a period of time, they basically what happens to you is, their mind is in your clutches, and you can decide where to engage the mind. Right now, it's not like that. For most people, mind is dragging them by putting a rope around the neck and dragging, like just like smartphones. <laughs> Smartphone, you can see, it was originally intended to help you. But now the smartphones are uh, putting a noose around the neck of people and dragging them. They just cannot uh, live without it. It said that a man can stay without his wife for even a week, but not without a smartphone. You know, you know, every moment people want it. Even by sleeping, they keep next to it. Correct, no? Next to themselves. So, so that means you know, how to gain control of my mind in such a way that I can switch off the phone and keep it in the cupboard when I want to study for the exam. Huh? And then when I need it, then I can take and use it. So how much command we have over our own mind and senses. And that command is increased by chanting and reading a page of Gita, a day, wisdom, and then coming in good association of like-minded people. Um, especially people who are uplifting association. Good people, those who are walking the right path and avoiding that which is harmful for, for us. So, when we go teaching this kind of courses, and uh, it is not just meant for some theoretical appreciation. After this course is over, you will find the students implementing some of these practices and you will find a very great change in them. We have seen it. Uh, all over India, we have 10,000 students who are practicing it. And we, we have been doing it last 30 years we have been doing. And these 10,000 people are very serious practitioners. In fact, they also, many of them are, are also teaching also. They are also going to universities, colleges. Now, I, in, in America, I go to East Coast and West Coast, around a dozen places, and about 25 universities. So, there also we have uh, many of our Indian students are studying there now, and they are helping us to reach this knowledge there also. Yeah. So, I hope I, I didn't give a too long answer for your question. <laughs> yeah. Very informative. Thank you. So, moving on to my next question. Hmm. Mm. But they fail to stay mm. motivated and inspired mm. to achieve their goals. So, yeah. what do you suggest? Uh, the reason for lack of motivation is explained in the Gita by Lord Krishna. He says there are two, uh, three types of nature. Huh? It's called pa ignorance, passion, and goodness. So, ignorance has certain fixed symptoms. He uses three words in Sanskrit Nidra, Alasya, Pramad. He says. So, Nidra means uh, oversleep. Alasya means lethargy, or uh, lethargy means not taking initiative, which is what you said now, huh? you know. And pramad means madness. Madness means putting anything into our system that is harmful for us, not knowing. Like outside itself, there is so much pollution, people are sucking cigarette inside. Huh? That is madness. Right, you know? So, in this way, uh, he says this is called Tamaguna is one. It's like a platform. Uh, platform means what, I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you all the three and then I'll tell you. The second one I told you is Rajoguna or passion. He uses the word Sangha and Krishna, two words he uses. So Sangha means attachment. Mm -hmm. Attachment for honor, prestige, status, seeing glamour, showing glamour, being very popular, you know, influencing people and uh, making a big money, this kind of things people have ambitions. And uh, Krishna means thirst, thirst for honor and Sangha means attachments. And the attachments sometimes can be very dangerous. Like you know, Dhritarashtra was attached to behind the kingdom, so he spoiled his son uh, Duryodhana. Correct, right, no? Kaikeyi was attached to uh, baking her son the king, and she drove away Ram to forest and Dasha died. You know that. So in this way, in our lives also, we have to see if we have attachments, which attachments are favorable, which are harmful. Huh? So the, in the in the Rajoguna, sometimes people are so attached to money making that when he comes home, he sees that wife has gone away, divorcing him. 
saying that you didn't give any time for the family. And then he goes to a doctor, doctor says you are close to a, a heart attack. <laughs> because he neglected health, he neglected family, but, but he made a lot of money. A lot of money in the pocket, no happiness. That is passion. You understand, no? Modern society is very, very much like that. You can see like that. So, passion means Sangha and Trishna. And Sattvaguna means, he says two things, Sukham and Jnanam. Sukham means happiness. Jnanam means knowledge. So, these people are knowledgeable about what to take in and how to be happy. And they have control over it also. Therefore, they have knowledge and happiness. So, these three are like three floors in a building. Uh, say, for example, you go to a ground floor of a building, there's a beer bar, it's a permit room, cabaret dance going on, smoking, drinking, drugs are all going on in the ground floor. Uh. In the first floor you go, there is a gym where people are doing treadmill, uh, people are building their body and very passionately or karate and all that they are doing. Then you go to the next second floor, there you find there is a yoga center where people are doing yoga now. So there's a temple, like here you saw in the first floor there's a temple. Very soothing kirtans are going on, some sermons are going on. So, if you see, if a student goes there, uh, one will go to the ground floor, or the first, or the second will depend on what? It will depend on what? Yeah. Ah, what you are looking for. Correct, no? Now, you are saying about some boys not getting motivation, for example. That means they are right now in Tamaguna now. And the, demo, and the lack of motivation comes from certain bad habits also. And the bad habits which I told you, uh, in Tamaguna means what habits they take to, like for example, night they don't sleep on time, you know. Like I'll just show you one small, uh, uh, this is actually a very famous, uh, why billionaires, huh? uh, what is that? Ah, I got it. Only I will not show you full thing, I will show you only a small part of it. Alpha. Is the alpha stage. alpha stage. It's been called the gateway to the subconscious mind. But when you wake up this early, you are between theta and alpha. The mind is capable of deep and profound learning, being fully aware and focused with an effortlessly calm mind. In other words, you don't have to work as hard. You are not thinking. You just relax into the moment. Another important fact known by all successful people is when you wake up, your subconscious mind is most soaks up information like a sponge. Whatever you hear, see, or are exposed to in the first 20 minutes will affect you and set the tone for the rest of the minutes in the early morning. This is why they meditate, listen to affirmations, and not checking their social media and emails so early. They choose consciously their tone of the day, being focused and positive and not being distracted. They choose to go to bed early and use the premature hours of each day in their own advantage. They make up a routine of waking up before the sun starts to shine and go to sleep after the sun goes down. Why do they go to bed so early? Between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. is where you can get the most from regenerative and deep sleep. After 10 to 2 is a very important. This is the reason. That means this body repairs wear and tear in the night time, 10 to 2. In order for this 10 p.m. reaction to take place, your body needs to slow down, which translates into reduction of your mental and physical activity. If 
you're still awake, there is a phenomena that takes place at this hour called second wind. This is caused by the rise in mental so in this way, if you don't allow, your system has for you. at 10 p.m. Nevertheless, you can only feel what the second wind's value on the level of focus. When there are no distractions and noises to disturb concentration, the brain has a great capacity to focus on certain tasks and thus generate a balanced rate between quality and work. Successful people are aware of this and they use their alone time in the early morning to take full advantage of their brain's functioning capacity. High achievers understand that premature hours of the day allow them to make better decisions as their energy levels are at their peak. Those who live a grand life understand that early morning willpower helps them to achieve high levels of discipline. A disciplined morning guides them towards a whole day of discipline. And this is exactly what supports their successful life. The peaceful and quiet time you get before the sun rises creates the environment you need in order to take care of yourself, which doesn't happen too often during the day. It's the me time that allows you to provide yourself with everything you need in order to successfully go through the day. As soon as the alarm goes off, you're facing a bump in the road, and it's up to you to get over it or not. It's up to you to decide whether you use your time on the level of focus. You need to ask for it. That's he, he also had mentioned, uh, who are the people like Tim Cox? He had mentioned five, six very prominent Apple CEO like that. So he says also, who are the people who follow this? So he had quoted some of the very prominent, well known people. It's up to you to decide whether you deserve breakthrough. The early mention to what really matters, real taste of what this life can truly You got an idea, no? So, what time he says is good for sleep? Uh, of course, you have to sleep six hours, but the, it should be including the slot, ten to two. Yeah. Ten to two, each hour is equal to two hours. Ah, correct. It's more beneficial, actually. Yeah, correct. And uh, if you see ten to four, initially you may feel a bit drowsy during the day, you know, because you are just starting the habit. But eventually, over time, you will be able to, you know, biological ah, clock. biological clock is set after that. If any of you sitting here. Say so you sleep at 12, for example. You move the clock by 15 minutes every week uh, until you hit 10. Mm -hmm. And then you make it 10 to 4 and you see the change in your life. Uh, many of us here, we all sleep at 9 and get up at 3. And then 18 hours we can work. All day we can work. In daytime we don't have to lie down at all. Then you get a lot of efficiency. So you were saying about the initiative taking. So uh, probably sometimes people are not fresh enough mm -hmm. to take initiative right now. So if they sleep at 12 or 1. Then they sleep eight and hours till they are not, you know, fresh enough. They feel very <coughs> dizzy tired. Yeah, incomplete. incomplete, yeah. They exactly, yeah. They yeah. Exactly. <laughs> then daytime also they sleep yes. a lot. And uh, sometimes they come back from the college and the lunch, uh, post lunch they sleep also. And they lose a lot of time. Yeah. One is that, and another reason for lack of motivation is lack of purpose also. Uh, they are not very determined about the purpose. What do you, nowadays you ask a student, you know, why are you studying? You know, they say that I want to earn a job. Why do you want a job? I want money. Why do you want money? Just to enjoy life. Huh? You know, that's all they have. They have no clear cut. In those days, if you see, there was passion in people. That they have, they take a field of their choice. And then uh, you, like for example, I have chosen a field which uh, was, which I was very fond of. And later on, my father blessed me and allowed me permission to go in the spiritual field fully, you know. Similarly, if any of you had a passion for your subject, and then you have some plans to develop yourself, you know, from undergrad to postgrad. And then, you know, say, one of you wants to become a teacher, you know, one of you wants to become this. Then they can work towards that goal. They will have a drive also. But nowadays, because the motivation is just to make money and enjoy life, that is not a very great. <laughs> that's not a very great motivation, correct? No, it's a very selfish type of uh, low-level uh, goal. It is. Uh, my, my father was an English professor, you know, English and mathematics he was teaching. So one MLA came to him and uh, he showed him a 500 rupee note and said, Sir, if you can make my son pass, you know, then I'll give you this or whatever. And uh, my father looked at the paper and said, See, your son has got 18 marks. How I can make it 35? Huh? If it is 32, 33, I can make it? 35. From 18, how I can make it 35? Instead, my father told him that you leave your son with me for six months training. I'll teach him mathematics and 
she will get 80 plus. It just requires some method of study, training I can give, like that is said. Just go, tell them not to make that. So, she told them, uh, but MLA was very much insisting. He said, no, 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 you please pass my son, I don't want him to study all over again. My father said, he was a man of character and he was very strict. He said, you do whatever you want, I cannot do this, I cannot uh, do cheating. Mm -hmm. Then he took another 500 rupees, 1000 rupees now. You know? <laughs> my father put his foot down and said, no. Then he threatened him also. I will trouble you, you will lose your job and everything. He said, even if I lose my job, I don't mind it. I can't walk the wrong path, he said. So, I, I was a small kid that time. From behind, I was watching all this. And then I saw my father, he was a man of principles. Mm -hmm. So, in the evening, he will have some 20 students to learn maths from him. And he never asked them for a single penny. But after they would learn, their parents would come and give something like in charity. That's all he would accept. <clears throat> so, teacher, he was a teacher having a passion for teaching. And he wanted to do it as a selfless service. He never had any money making was not the goal. In the Vedic times where Kshatriya saves you from a tiger or a lion, no? you give him a thousand rupees, he will ask you, what are you doing? I did my duty. No? Similarly, Brahmana gives you knowledge. No? Then whatever you give charity, they will accept. But now times have changed now. People are only thinking about themselves. Even doctor, the doctor profession also has become like that now. If you see, medical profession. So, therefore, people don't have a selfless motivation. So, the drive is also very less. One easiest thing is, Sachipa, what can we tell them, students? You can tell them that avoid some of the habits that are making you dull. You can tell them. Correct now? Those who don't have sufficient drive, sufficient motivation. Now, there is also one more fear coming up nowadays. The jobs opportunities are becoming bleak because of AI. Mm -hmm. So, somebody thinks, even if I crack the examination, get my degree, will I get a job? Anyway, I may not get a job. So, why to study hard? <laughs> like that, some, some students are thinking like that. But whether you get a job or not comes later. Now you have to study well and you have to get the marks, correct? No? Yeah. I have heard my friend saying, let's tell our parents that AI is going to take our jobs. So that's yeah. why we are not. <laughs> Actually, we in the, in the modern times, everybody is becoming engineer, everybody is becoming doctor, everybody is becoming child accountant. And according to the psychophysical nature, people are not able to go in their field. That's another reason for lack of interest. Say one of you here is an artist. If you go in the artistry field, you will do that without anybody's pushing. Because that is your inner calling. If anybody is a singer, you go in musical uh, talent, you go and play instruments or you sing song, and you will see that nobody needs to push you. The psychophysical nature is inbuilt in you by God's uh, grace. You have some specific talent. There are eight talents. You heard about that? S L I M B I L. Yeah. I'll tell you what is it. So, you all can check it yourself. Which one uh, matches you very well. Hmm? I'll show you this thing also, a picture. In this picture, it's all of them are mentioned here. Uh, it's called a self... Uh, uh, okay, I'll show you. If you show the PPT, you will understand. In that, the eight talents are shown in one slide only, all of them. So, I'll show you that. It's called as seven types of intelligence, uh, which will boost your self-esteem yeah, by knowing those. So I had one session called it. It is there in your uh, mobile also. You can check it. If you put radhishamdas.com, if you check it in that. Uh, 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 in that, the first one, uh, this course is available, self-development course. I got it. So, you can see this uh, seven, you can read the seven talents. Body, physical. Body, uh, yeah. Body, physical means these people are good in sports. No, jogging, running, badminton, cricket. They, they, they need to use their body and that's how uh, it's natural. Sports is natural for them. Okay, and then? Then linguistic. 
Linguistic means they can learn even five, six languages also. They are very language smart. Huh? And then? Mathematical logical. Ah, mathematical logical. Which means these people always talk everything in terms of maths mm -hmm. equations. They are fond of maths. And then? Visual spatial. Uh, visual spatial. Spatial. So that means you are an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, you may be an artist. You like to do drawings, perspectives, and things like that. And then? Musical. Musical. You may play guitar or you may play instruments or you may sing also. Huh? Mm -hmm. And then? Interpersonal. means you are very good at uh, connecting with people. You are a people people. Huh? Yeah. People people means you can be a Hachar person yes. or you can be good in marketing or sales. Uh, so because you need to connect with people, communicate with people like that. And then? Intra, intra, intra means you are a philosopher or a thoughtful person. Mm -hmm. They can leave you in a room with uh, say some dozen books and they can lock you up for a year also, you don't mind. <laughs> Some people say, oh, just give me my books, of course you have to supply them food through the window or something. <laughs> and they can sit in the room. Any of you is like that here? You like to be spend time with books? There are people like that. Huh? And then? All are covered, yeah. There's one more added nowadays called natural. Which means they are very, very keen about eco-friendliness and environment, protecting the cows and the, protecting the environment. They are, so they are, they are naturalistic, to call it. So that is the eighth one. So, how many of you sitting here, you felt that at least one or two is matching with yours in this? Correct? Which one matches with yours? So, many linguistic matches with me. You know many languages? Yeah, I can mm. sing in many languages. Oh, okay. And you learnt also a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. and yourself? I can relate with much more Okay. And madam, yours? Mine is like body or physical. Activity. You like physical activity? Yeah. Sports. Uh, okay. Oh, I told you, correct? Huh? I told you. And it's uh, also, I feel like intrapersonal. I like to uh, okay. like, uh, oh. read books. Okay. You like, so, naturally you had the instinct. Okay, and yourself? I'm intrapersonal. Okay, very good. And yourself? Uh, so, intrapersonal and a body. Okay, and yourself? Physical. Okay, and you? Okay. So, each of us can find out. So, and if you pursue... Uh, and even in that direction, if you make efforts, you are going to blossom very, very easily. Because these talents which you all recognize now, this comes to you pretty naturally, without much effort. And others also observe you and they appreciate you. And if you invest little time in this, returns will be very big. You know, very easily you can catch. So, because you have that uh, in your, uh, like we say, no, you are in your elements when you do these things. Correct, no? So, if any student you feel is demotivated, you can ask them which one matches. You want to ask him to go in the direction, he'll be super enthusiastic. Yeah. You'll see that. Hmm? Make sense? Yeah. Uh, this is made more clear in this, you see. You can see this now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's this eight one in there. Ah, naturalistic, correct. Correct, no? Yeah. Actually, many students don't know these things. It's a very simple thing, you just identify. Mm. And then accordingly you go, mm. then you can actually do wonders in that field. Then such a person can do his studies side by side, but he can work in this direction also. Correct, no? So along with your teaching, you do this also, right? Yes. Ah, my so. daughter, uh, ah. Daughter, uh, ah. Okay. Ah. So that is a natural inclination. When these are all talents gifted by God to everybody, and uh, if you detect it, then uh, you feel happy in life. Say, for example, by playing badminton, you, you feel motivated in life. Then you can be a good teacher also. Correct, right, no? And without engaging in this, we feel sometimes something lacking. Yes. Yeah. Um, Yes. Any other question? Yeah. yeah. As we see, Scorn has always emphasized on reading books. Mm. What's the best book a youth can start with his journey in spirituality? I would suggest uh, one book which I exclusively published for the youth called Discover Yourself. We have a copy, you can get that. DYS, we call it, yeah. In, in your mobile, if you go, I'll just show you. You have a mobile? You can just put uh, radishamdas.com. If you go there, I'll show you. radishamdas.com. You put that. As soon as you open it, 
new commerce will be there first box will be new commerce even if you put in google also radhesham das if you put the first thing if you click it takes you to the website immediately you got it first one is new commerce Uh, uh, so in the second one, in this, if you click this, discover yourself. If you click this, this is the course. Yeah, these are lectures and PPTs are also there. If you click any of them like this, immediately PPTs also come and download PPTs also. Yeah, you can show, madam, also the new commerce. If you click that, uh, if you click that, the second box. That second box. If you click. Fundamentals of spirituality is that. Yeah. Uh, if you click that inside, that the first one is DIY. Discover yourself. Oh. That is eight sessions. It is. It has a book also, and uh, these are the uh, YouTube videos are also there. And if you click any box in the middle, it will give you PPTs also. If you want to download, mm-hmm. you can teach also others. Yeah. So this I would say is a very preliminary one. This is actually for those who have a little inclination on science and spirituality. But somebody is not so scientifically inclined. There is another one I'll show you in the same new commerce. You go back to that. In that, there is one course called Self Development Course. It's everything about self. There are ten sessions in that. In the uh, if you go there, I'm going to share only the okay, in the previous one. The Applied Spirituality. If you see the first one, second course, Self Development. You read all the headings only. One is the heading. Self awareness. Self awareness. self care self care self management self management self discipline this is the book respect yeah and then self reliance yeah this is overcoming inferiority complex yes give up self prestigeness yes righteousness righteousness overcoming superiority yeah. complex then abundance mentality correct freedom from insecurity correct art of thinking win and then yeah so the ten sessions are that this is very good this is even more preliminary compared to the discover yourself yeah because many people are concerned about their self mm-hmm. so the self development course students will appreciate more they can begin with self development and go to discover yourself like that yeah, yeah. because not all students are spiritually so inquisitive mm-hmm. some of them are at least worried about their health at least mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. worried about their uh, like some of them are unable to handle their emotions mm-hmm. handle their health handle their future so self development course will help them with that So once they get a little faith in this, then they may understand discover yourself better after that. So in the first box which you saw newcomers, all these things are inside that only. Hmm? Yeah. So I have, I have, uh, uh, hope I have not uh, made you uh, frightened by too many materials. No, no, no. <laughs> But I thought they are relevant. Therefore, I showed you. Yeah. Hmm. yeah and uh, and uh, and it's open and available for anybody in the world uh, earlier i was having all these things with me and uh, now i have made this website also now made it put everything even these four courses also i am planning to make pocket books also for this there will be six, uh, one one course has six books so six into four courses there will be 24 pocket books similar to this so the pocket books will be very easy for the students to read and learn the nasty yeah Some other pocket books are uh, stress to smile. I have given some dramas also in this. Some skits are there. Some activity sheets are also there. Yeah, because nowadays students want some activity also. For time management, we have some activity. We make them fill up some things and like that. Yeah, some activity also we give. Yeah. You all can uh, see these two courses at your leisure. Uh, Self development and uh, discover yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes. So my question is, how to be stable in both success and failure situations? Hmm. This is a very very important question. You see, Pandavas actually, you know, their wife Draupadi was insulted. You know, the kingdom was uh, snatched away. You know, Bhima was fed with poison. You know, after twelve years, when they returned back, the kingdom was not given back. They had to actually wage a war to get back the kingdom. They even asked only five villages. Even that was not given. So, if you look at the Pandavas, you know any of us in that situation will be so negatively driven. We may consider suicide as an option, isn't it? But they never considered that. 
you never see that on the other hand nowadays students you find if they fail in some paper and they feel fear of peer pressure i would say that you know when we face a failure we have to uh, uh, study the history of such people like for example the pandavas i told you when you read mahabharata ramayana your inner strength increases you know because you see that uh, my situation is not as bad as these fellows these fellows are in a worse situation you know? even in that they had that inner courage we have to give the children that inner strength to face failures also i think one of the reasons uh, children have difficulty is they have been pampered like some parents what they do beta we were very poor in our, in our young days our parents couldn't take care we want take you take care of you you take two dozen uh, sandals eh? two dozen chapels you have 100 dresses <laughs> like that they pamper them too much anything you want to eat you can eat it will give you so if you get things very easily like in uh, in one american one place one school teacher was giving out this uh, winter gloves you know and winter socks and winter caps and winter sweaters eh? so some of the little children coming from poor background they were afro american you know mm-hmm. they said, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am they were very gratefully received and they wore all of that and they went and showed to their parents and oh my teacher is so good she gave me winter cap and winter gloves and winter socks and everything and the other rich kids in the class they saw this and said what is this they just threw it off they told them ma'am that we thought he'll give us ipad or something you know what to do with this kind of because they get they get these things very easily they took it for granted whereas the poor children for them it was a gift for them so that means in our life if things come very easily we take them for granted and we always are pampered with success after success so therefore even rich kids also should be given chance to go to often age and see how the poor children are living sometimes they can go to village and parents can teach them to be charitable you know distribute some prasadam you know go to go and feed the cows in the goshala they have to take them for such outings where they are always not in a mood of taking taking but also in a mood of giving also <laughs> not just grabbing but also giving like that. you said there is something that instead of giving your children what you didn't have in your child instead of giving them materialistic things yeah. teach them something that you were never taught in your child give yes. some principle ah that is a good good training it is <laughs> that is true like my my father was a millionaire he had almost like 20 houses in a row you know he had left them all on rent and he was living in one of the houses so and he had six shops also he had so i was the only son i had three sisters i got them all married and everything so when i was in my school days once i lost my pencil in the house house only i lost it somewhere it was only this much long i told my father and said papa give me a new pencil i asked so he asked me where is the old pencil i said no old pencil became very small uh, therefore i want a new one so he, he told me okay bring the old one i want to see it you know then i'll give you the new one then i searched here and there i couldn't locate it i said he lost it i said he said that is not acceptable you can't afford to lose it and i said it's not in the school it's at home only but somewhere it is misplaced he said search it now so one hour me and him we both were searching at last it was inside one notebook you know <laughs> i took it out and i showed him ah, this is the one <laughs> then he told me this this much now you make it half size then i'll give you he said then i asked him see you are a millionaire why, why what is the problem in you giving me a new pencil he said see there are many children who don't have any pencil at all huh? he would never waste money although he was very rich he grew us in a very uh, in a strict fashion he would take us to the garden he made us do gardening you know and we grew tomatoes and bendies and you know uh, and we grew jandu flowers you know we would offer the flowers to god he would do that so one thing is it all depends on upbringing i feel yeah but uh, she asked the question now that uh, if some students are face, uh, unable to balance in their success and failure you now what do we do they have been brought up like that mm-hmm. at this stage what else can they do alternatively so i would say that uh, they they have to learn geeta where lord krishna teaches arjuna sukha dukha same krutva labha labho jaya jaya he says that in sukha dukha and man apaman learn to be equipoised like in india once india pakistan match indians won the match so they put our sachin tendulkar in a chariot 
where Krishna was driving the chariot. And instead of Arjun, they put Sachin, you know. And instead of uh, bow and arrow, they gave him a cricket bat, you know. So I was amazed, amazed by the strange picture. Krishna is driving chariot, Sachin is sitting, standing there with a cricket bat. This was one year they garlanded him and put flowers, big celebration with pomp and everything. Next year, when India lost the match with Pakistan, you know, they burned all the effigies of the Indian cricketers. So it's like two extreme behaviors. Huh? It's an example of monkey-like behavior, correct? No? But even a monkey, if you see, monkeys are generally very hyperactive. Huh? But there's one monkey which is not hyperactive, which is very like this monkey sitting. Like this. And that's Hanuman, yeah. <laughs> you know that. So Hanuman is calm. Why? Because he chants Ram Nam. So by chanting the Nam, mind becomes calm. So we can tell them that in case you are disturbed by some results or anything, you know, go to the park, take a deep breath, and you just chant the name uh, and pray to God to give you the inner strength. Arjuna was actually crying in the beginning of the Gita. And then after hearing Gita, he became very confident. So crying Arjuna became confident Arjuna. Correct, no? And then he fought the battle valiantly and emerged victorious. So you can tell them also, like, uh, you can be like Arjuna. Now you are crying now. You hear Gita and chant. That's why I told you ABC. Association. Association means you should also meet people who are practicing it. Uh, staying, like for example, once in a week, those who attend the program, you know, they get an opportunity to ask questions just like you all are asking now. And they ask questions, things become more clear. Because if you read a book, sometimes you get a question, you can't ask anyone. But when you associate directly, then you can ask them questions. Why it is said like this? Why not like this? You can ask questions. And see, is the chanting. So this uh, reading a page of Gita and chanting itself will calm their mind very much. And also they have to have company of friends who will be uplifting friends. Because for example, say a boy got a fail marks and his friend give, gives an embrace and tells him, don't worry, it happens to everybody. You know, today I, I got first class, tomorrow you will get a distinction. You know, everybody fails in this world, everybody succeeds. It's not a big deal. You know, your academics is not everything in life. Like academics is one portion of life. Like you know, you all had your childhood where you were playing with toys, huh? mm-hmm. and that that phase is over now. Huh? Now you have come to teenage. Now, now this is the phase of your life where you are into academics now. Now the next phase of life will be money making, correct? Right, no. Then after that, you will have a family phase of life when you get married, then husband, wife, children, and then you grow in your uh, business, and then you make more money, put up the family, and everything. Then there is a retired phase of life, correct, no? So these are all different facets of life. Academics is one phase of life. And besides that, in in one one lifetime itself, you see, you know, you have time with your parents and relatives, you have time with God, you have time with gardening, time with hobbies. So academics is not everything in life. Academics is one small thing. Why to make a big fuss about academics so much? That I failed in some paper, I commit suicide. It's a foolish thing. So you can tell our friend that, you know, okay, this time you fail. Next time study well and get good marks. Mm-hmm. Krishna tells Arjuna also, <clears throat> what has happened now, you learn from it and go ahead. Mm-hmm. Don't look back, you know, don't uh, brood over the past. Mm-hmm. It's not going to help, you know. Like one, uh, once in our mathematical exam, one boy always used to get sent down, you know. So he answered five questions and the sixth question was here. So, but they had not written PTO, you know, please turn over. So he answered the five questions and told everybody, five into twenty, I'm going to get sent down. He was selling. But then friends told, hey, if you want to get sent down, the next question was on the next page, you never saw it. And the boy cried like anything. Three months he was crying. Huh? Because he knew answer to the question, but he didn't see the question. So he was telling everybody, you know why I got poor marks? Because I didn't see the question. If I saw it, I would have got sent down. <laughs> so sometimes we all do mistakes for which we keep regretting every day. So you should tell him that don't brood over the past, make uplifting friendships, study Gita and chant also. And also uh, don't uh, see a smaller picture of life, see a larger picture of life. Academics is only one small part of life. You have sports, you have hobbies, you have parents, you have friends, you have different phases of life. Don't just get bogged down in academics alone. So this is what I would advise. Let's see somebody. Makes sense? Okay. Yeah. As yeah. we are speaking of Gita, so mm. can we get a sloka from Bhagavad Gita, that, mm. a very prominent sloka, an mm. eye-opening sloka, that mm. there is a Supreme Personality there, who is there yeah. to guide you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he says that. But Krishna tells Arjuna, uh, 
tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yudhya cha. He says, remembering me, you fight. He says, man yarpita mano buddhir maame vaishyasi asamshaya. He says that if you offer your mind and intelligence to me, at the time of death you will come back to me. He says that. And then two components are there in this. Maam anusmara means remembering God. And yudhya means your duty. So all of your students. So it's like a railway line. You know, you have one is your academic life. Another one is your spirituality. So spirituality is Arjuna's connection to Krishna. And uh, the other line is Arjuna's profession, which is to fight the battle. And for all of you, in your case, it is student life. Correct, no? So Krishna says, you know, give uh, equal weightage to both. 50% academics and 50% spirituality. And don't do the third thing, which is irresponsible behavior. That you don't go for that. That's what many people lose time in. So focus on your uh, dharma of your studies and focus on the eternal dharma, which is to awaken love for God. Like working on the principle of always remembering Krishna. Ah, never forgetting him. You know that? Yeah. How did you know that? Actually, I'm a practitioner of this form. Oh, acha, acha. okay. You have been practicing. You know chanting also? Yeah. Okay, very good. If any of you wish to uh, chant or you wish to have a copy of Gita, I can arrange for you if you want. Huh? Can provide you. You are all coming first time here? Okay. You have been here? Okay. You know any of the devotees here or you are coming first time? You are coming first time, yeah. You are coming first time? No, I have visited in the temple. In the same temple. You have visited here also? No, not here, just that temple. Which temple? Our. Uh, Ah, because this is uh, in your locality here. There is one more temple in the camp also, the MG Road end. Yeah? You have been there? Ah, okay, very good. So you all already have an introduction. And uh, our temple has beautiful kirtans in the morning and evening. When they come, now in the evening you will find uh, they do melodious music. You just come and sit, you will be very relaxed. That's another thing you can tell that uh, friend. You know, in case somebody feels very, very mind pained, about some failure, they are unable to balance their mind. You just come and sit in the kids and they'll forget everything. You know? I actually suggest my friends to attend the God Arti. Yeah. Very pleasing Arti. Very nice. <laughs> the evening. So, okay, yeah. now when we visited, there was some bhajan going on and some hmm. small kid was singing. Oh. So melodious. Yeah, correct. These, many of the children are our uh, devotees living around. They are children. They are very, very enthusiastic. And uh, we have a school also. In our school, we have around 400 uh, children who are all uh, the Bhakta's children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The parents also live, near, live nearby. Some of them work in uh, Magarpata. Some of them work in Hinjabadi, where they go from here. Families are here. So, you'll find many, many families coming to the temple also. Yeah. Even we have research mm-hmm. center. The research center also. You saw that DRC? Yeah, yeah. It is affiliated yeah. with the University of Pune. Affiliated University of Pune. Mm-hmm. We do, that is another institute where we do MOUs with colleges. Mm-hmm. That is also another thing. They can also, they offer many courses also. If you want to meet, I can arrange your meeting another day if you come. I will arrange a meeting. They do lots. They they have programs for professors also. Teachers also they have programs. That is like a research institute. Even Vice Chancellor of Pune came. Vice Chancellor of CU, the PBG, you know. They have made MOU with them also. The Vice Chancellor, three people came. So... They can uh, show you some of the MOUs they made with different colleges. If uh, for your college you want to even do these courses also, you can do through them because they are very uh, official board it is and they have many scientists in their board. Even uh, uh, Bhatkar is also a part of the team, that team, you know, or, uh, one who invented the supercomputer. So he's also part of the team. So then we can make MOU with them and we can conduct these courses for you if you wish. Hmm? Generally, what colleges do, they choose one of the four courses. Mm-hmm. After that is over, sometimes they call us for the second course also. Mm-hmm. They, depending on the interest level of the students and uh, how many want to register. So, in one college, they showed all the four. And whichever course got the maximum count, they get invited us for that. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Your, most of the questions are answered? Yeah. I have another appointment at 6.30. Yeah. 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 So, you would just like to ask one last question. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is for our uh, guidance. My last question is, what message would you like to convey to the reader of our magazine, especially the youth, mm. uh, regarding their role in shaping the future of our nation? Yeah. So, I would say that our current leadership of India, you know, uh, is taking guidance from many saintly persons mm. also. 
and why it is so because chanakya was guiding chandragupta maurya at the time our country was called as the golden age of the guptas you say like that so when shivaji maharaj in maharashtra was guided by samarth ramdas you know so the saintly people are selfless people they are well wishing people and they don't have any personal agenda they just want to see the people of the world happy with god in the center and with uh, spiritual principles you know gu- as a guiding light for the world there like the bhagavad gita is a manual of god so therefore i would say that the modern day youths are now not ha- not having proper direction so they should take the direction from uh, books like bhagavad gita and uh, uh, this kind of courses what we are offering i would say so i would say that three things are very important for students character competence devotion so arjuna had a character and competence and devotion all the three he had so nowadays students are focusing only on one which is competence and therefore they are very frustrated so some people may work on competence and good character but without any knowledge of god and devotion so then their life does not have a compass they may have good character they may have good competence but devotion to your supreme initially your devotion is mother then your devotion is to mother and father then your love you distribute to family members then you caste people and state people then country people as it expands it goes all over the world in all over the world also somebody may love all humans you may be humanitarian also still they kill goats and cows and chicken and all that so then how to love all the living beings that's only possible when you love one supreme so love god love all we say it's like a uh, what do you call it the master switch when you put it on then all lights are on when you put it off all lights are off so i would say that the student should uh, should be groomed in these three things character competence devotion to make their life a uh, yeah, healthy body mind soul huh? for a healthy body mind and soul they need the combination of these three is it is it good enough thank you we are really very fortunate for this yeah. opportunity hey, there was prasad there i can give them some prasad thank you guruji for your time i remember yeah Oh. I remember in 2014 or 15, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, there was a Radha Rasa Maharaj one article was mm-hmm. also published in the same magazine. Okay. Nice Is it that? Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. You would be got it? Who didn't get it? I'll come. You got it? All of you got it? Sure. Hare Krishna, will you come? Achha, it was which year? Uh, you, all, you had the same magazine? I, I remember okay. Subhadrip wrote telling me about it. Okay. I surely share it with you. Okay. Yeah. It, it was published also, huh? Yeah, it was published also. Okay. Only published it. This magazine has been coming since how many years? Since 2000. Really? 2005. Oh, amazing. Every year it comes. In 2018, it won the university prize also. First prize. Oh, really? Yeah. Achha. So, student, your students get a copy of this? Yeah, yeah. Please. Everybody gets a copy. It's published by the college. College, yeah. So you you all have a club or something? What's the name of your club? Readers Club, we call it. Okay, Readers Club. After that, we publish the Sujan Master. Oh ho! And besides the Sujan Master publication, you all also come together for any other uh, activity in your uh, group? Yeah, there is a Spring hmm. Festival of okay. Tectonic, yeah, which okay. is a technical event, big okay. technical event. Um, okay. All the branches. Oh ho! That ha- happens when? Did, when does it? Just, just now, recently. Recently. Okay. Spring Festival. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 February we had that. Oh, uh-huh. that how many days? How many days it is? Uh, four days, four to five days. Oh, that you all only organize. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. your There team has. Events, huh? like okay. Events, okay. Events. Oh, it's like a continuous four days. Yeah. Yeah. It's only the evening or all day? All day. Oh, all day it is. After the technical competitions, paper uh-huh. presentations. Okay. Yeah. So you you organize it and then different students participate. Yes, yes. Yeah. So in your club, how many of you are leading this club together? How many of you? There are there? many more. Different sections are also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. So you are from? I'm from English section. Co-editor of the English section. Ah, right, right, right. right. So you divided your uh, services. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right. Very easy working as a team. Correct, correct. Like you all are so we have the same section. That also you have multiple languages also. Yeah. They are approaching okay. some different guests from okay. different teams, and then oh, together oh. we will combine all hmm. that. Wonderful, and wonderful. Ah, oh, very good. We, we also have a very beautiful yeah. open up love for you. Tulsi plants. Thank you. Group photo with. Ah, yeah, 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 yes. Hello. 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 Hello.
thank you the best gift for me because we have uh, we, we every day we worship tulsi maharani thank you you know i'll tell you one interesting thing i was telling you about uh, ignorance passion and goodness no so in that you will find uh, in those days they used to call us raja rishi you know raja rishi so raja means rajas hmm? rishi means sattva so when you combine the rajas raja rajaguna with uh, sattuguna of a saintly person then it is like converting a flood into a dam because the dam has water which is having high potential energy mm-hmm. whereas the flood has kinetic energy yes. but the flood is a destructive energy mm-hmm. whereas dam is a constructive mm-hmm. energy so therefore the kings had passion mm-hmm. what happens in passion without thinking they act whereas when you get the touch of a saintly guidance then you know in which direction i should make the water flow that therefore it's like a dam i remember asking one question in one of the sessions mm. you answered that uh, passion governed by goodness ah, so that, right? yes passion has to be guided otherwise like in the road or the traffic everybody want to go fast in that car but there is one fellow showing the hand <laughs> you know without a guidance there is going to be accidents correct no similarly i feel modern students have lot of passion and lot of i mean vigor but that is misguided often i feel so uh, in order to guide it properly these three things character competence devotion you know in a character will make them uh, you know cultivate values like our country has had uh, leaders like gandhi vinoba bhave and such uh, many many great leaders in our country so character and then competence in their own education and the field of profession and devotion to god will make them you know people of high integrity and you know people uh, people people who are guided by god they know god is watching at every moment every everything we do so therefore i feel that in our school in our bhakti vendha model school these three are the motto of the school we blend character competence and devotion that's our motto actually cool. actually the school has been functioning in the same campus but now we have moved it 1 km away from here is going to open there in a place uh, everybody just behind so uh, today it's getting late for you but another day when you come i will introduce you to brc if you wish to uh, know about which all colleges are having mou with them we began with pune university okay. then majumdar also came from okay. symbiosis okay. then uh, pvg came okay. like that they have collaboration with six colleges they have six universities there so now many of the students of the university they are going to introduce electives in their college mm-hmm. you all don't have elective on well education or anything we are we are trying you have it yeah and now in nep college mm-hmm. more will be there ah it's going to come more school correct they call it as iks they yeah. call it indian knowledge system yeah. so these courses are all coming under that only yeah sure because these are all when you meet the college authorities you can tell them mm. these courses are practical and uh, they are supposed to produce definite results so we will show that in the beginning of the course these boys were smoking drinking they were doing all this after this class six sessions are over you can see that change in life you can and if some students take a oath that they will not do these things now they will give up this thing that's a very good transformation and uh, that way we have given them a healthy lifestyle correct na healthy lifestyle and more uh, they become better human beings correct na thank you thank you nice meeting thank you thank you thank you